Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Hi, guys, and welcome to my book review. Today, we are reviewing The Strange Affair of spring Jack by Mark Hodder. So, first things first, obviously there's going to be spoilers. You know, if you don't want to find out the plot of the book, or a general plot of the book, then you're going to have to skip past some of this. But we won't go into too many details, we're just going to give a general overview and my thoughts. So, I'm going to start by saying I absolutely loved this book. It is so up my street, it hurts. It's part of the steampunk genre. I didn't know this was a genre up till very recently. Steampunk is like... Victorian but futuristic, lots of like technology and stuff like that, like a real kind of overlap of time periods. I didn't know that, but I always knew I liked films and things that had that in it, you know, like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, stuff like that. And this falls slap bang right into that genre, so steampunk genre. And it is based on a man called Sir Richard Francis Burton. Now what Hodder does in this is that he uses real characters from history and he puts them in his plot but then embellishes, changes, mixes it up a lot. So well it's based on a real person and it might you know, focus on some events that actually happened in their life, obviously it's mostly fiction and he makes a point of saying that in the book. Keep showing me the book as if you're going to get confused about what one we're talking about. Sir Richard Francis Burton was a famous Victorian, he done it all. He was a soldier, a poet, an explorer, he looked for the source of the Nile, that was a really big thing. He translated a lot of books, um, he translated the Kama Sutra, Arabian Nights, things like that. So, you know, a man of the world and this book really focuses on that. It crosses over with the story of spring Jack. spring Jack was like an urban myth in Victorian times. The guy who was kind of looked like Dracula except about eight feet tall and he was attacking all these women. A lot of women were claiming you know in real life that they had been attacked by him but people generally think that it was a bit of a ghost story. So these cross over. The basic premise is Sir Richard Francis Burton, an aristocrat, he's kind of disgraced, he's kind of fallen out of favour with Victorian society and he gets attacked by spring Hill Jack he gets caught up in it and basically he gets made the king's agent. So he gets made a secret agent for the king to go and see, you know, what's happening with spring Hill Jack. You know, solve the mystery kind of thing. And essentially, spring Hill Jack is from the future. He's a man called Edward Oxford who was a direct descendant hundreds of years after of the man called Edward Oxford who attempted to assassinate Queen Victoria. This actually happened. But in real life, it was a failed assassination attempt. In the book, it's a successful assassination attempt. And essentially, that Edward Oxford has come back from the future to try and stop his ancestor doing it. It doesn't go well. And, you know, subsequently, there's a series of unfortunate events. And this is the basis of this story. Now, there are six of these books. It's called the Burton and Swinburne series. Burton and Swinburne because there was a poet in Victorian times called Swinburne. And he's in the books too, he is Burton's best mate and they go and solve crimes together. They've got a kind of whole team and it's not just the spring Hill Jack but he does feature throughout the series but they get in all sorts of adventures and they go from, you know, a lot of it's in London, Africa, different times, all over the place. I won't go too much in this into the other books in the series but this is incredible. If this is your thing... I cannot recommend it enough. And also, in this case, I did judge a book by its cover. I saw this cover in Waterstones ages ago and I thought, that looks right up my street. But for whatever reason, I didn't buy it that day. I saw it so long ago. And then recently, you know, I've seen me and Ava just can't get enough of Waterstones. So we're there all the time and I saw it. I thought, I'm going to give it a try. And I was hooked. I was honestly hooked. I had it, I think I was reading it when we went to Rhodes and I, I dusted it in days. Like, I just could not put it down. It's such a page turner and for me as well, like I demolish and consume so much like business and self-help material. And while that is very beneficial, sometimes you know it still kinda of feels like work. So see just getting your teeth into something like a bit of fiction. You know, that isn't too taxing. I, I found it so, so enjoyable. For a while, I was kinda of shaming myself for reading fiction, like, you know, that doesn't benefit you in any way. 
it's not contributing to you moving further forward, but not everything in life has to contribute to you moving further forward. You don't always have to be growing and compounding. Sometimes we can just enjoy ourselves. And if you know anything about self-care, you know that it's the taking care of yourself and enjoying yourself that allows you to make those gains, you know, when you are trying to push ahead. So, kind of going off on a tangent, but fiction is fun, fiction is allowed. That is my point. This book is amazing. I honestly cannot recommend it enough. There's a lot going on. You know, it is. There's plots, subplots. It can be quite detail heavy, but it's done in a very, it's still a very easy reading way. And it's honestly, it's just such a page turn. It's entertaining from start to finish. It's funny. It has you on the end of your seat. It's scary. It's a thriller. It's, and, and it's, it, for me, what I love about it is, and I think we can fall into the trap of you kind of romanticise, like, you know, periods of history that aren't your own and you think, oh God, I'd love to live back then. And then you can remember, like, yeah, but the average life expectancy was about 35 and it was really horrible. And even if you were rich, it still wasn't great. And if you weren't rich, it was horrendous. But I, I really romanticise this era. Um, I just think it would have been, there was so much going on and so much getting discovered. And I love all that old architecture and the fashion and stuff like that. I just think it would have been such a good thing to be alive. And and when you read this book, like, you really feel like you're there. Like, you see the characters. Like, when I actually finished the series, I had such a profound feeling of loss because you feel like you know the characters and you're so immersed in that world that when it comes to an end, you actually feel like, like someone's died. I mean, obviously not as acute as that, but you know what I mean? Like, you get that sense of loss. So, and I think that speaks to the talent of the writer that he creates characters in this universe that you feel so a part of and such a strong affinity to. So, like I say, I really, you feel like you were there. You feel like you're there, that you feel like you're in it. And um, you become so invested in the characters and there's such a good broad spectrum of characters as well that it kind of ticks all boxes. So, like I say, I just, I cannot recommend it enough. There's so much going on and um, yeah, absolutely amazing. So, Burton and Swinburne, the Strange Affair of Spring Heeled Jack, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Another thing I like about the book is that they're not formulaic, or I didn't find them formulaic anyway, so you know in some books you've got a bit of background, the going's good, there's a three quarter dip and it all comes good in the end. You know, they do build to drama at the end, the way you know you would want an adventure book to do, but I really found them like a breath of fresh air, like I just found them a fresh take, so like I said, if you enjoy the steampunk, it's called steampunk, genre, that Victorian kind of technology, a lot of crossover of different stories, I love that as well. If you like that, you'll love this. Good plots. It was never a laboured read. There's some books I like. Lord of the Rings, for example, where it's incredible and I would read them again and again, but sometimes it's quite a heavy read. And this was never like that. Like, it was a page turner. It was the definition of a page turner. Like, I, I would keep telling myself, like, oh, I'm just going to read like 10 more pages, then I'll go to sleep. And then I'd be three chapters down. It was such a page turner. So, it was an easy read. It was a fun read. And if you like that genre, I can't recommend it enough. So, out of 10, I think it's 10. Because honestly, I couldn't wait to read the rest of the series. I actually had to order two of them in from Waterstones because they're uh, not really in publication anymore. But honestly, 10 out of 10, cannot recommend enough. If you enjoy fiction, if you enjoy steampunk, if you enjoy the Victorian era, if you like sci-fi, get on it. Can't recommend enough. I'm going to be reviewing the other books in the series as well as some more stuff that's kind of up my street, you know, in terms of like business, self-help, wellness. But I think I'm going to do at least one book review a week and that might be fiction, that might be business, but going forward anyway for now, I'll definitely be reviewing the rest of the books in this series. So read it, get it, I'm going to link it. Let me know what you think. I'd love to get your feedback on if you enjoyed it, if you're going to read the rest of the series. And also, please, if you have any suggestions about books I should review going forward, please let me know. Probably within the sci-fi or like business space, that's usually what I read. But I am open to suggestions. I think it's good to be fluid and broaden your horizons. And I probably am guilty of reading the same thing all the time. I probably do need to mix it up a wee bit. So let me know your suggestions. Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.